and companies they follow For example, company decide, gov the, sorry, the gov government decide that the laptop, the maximum price of the laptop gonna be thousand yuan. Yuan, so not yen. Right? So if a company can produce a good laptop and it can afford to sell at thousand yuan price, then it will survive. Otherwise, the company switch on to other products or maybe exit the market, right? Or salaries, the government say that, okay, minimum salary gonna be in Shanghai, 5,000 yuan. Now, how does it impact your business? Previously, you were paying janitor 2,000 and now you have to pay 5,000, it's a huge jump. Now, what you will do? The unskilled workers, you must pay at least 5,000 yuan. Right? So it means the resources are allocated by one central body or the government. Even in companies, there are management. If you study the management, there are centralized management it means all the decisions are coming from the top head office, right? In case of markets, all the decisions are coming from the government body. In decentralized market, we call that market economy. It's an economy that allocates resources through the decentralized decisions of many firms and households as they interact in the market for the goods and services. One company is selling laptop at 1000 yuan, one is selling at 1900 yuan, and one is selling at 500 yuan, right? And there are different customers, and they are buying from these three com these, these three uh, companies, right? If they further decrease their prices or they increase their prices, it's not going to be happening. You know, in the market, their customers going to be switching here or there. So this kind of co economy in which there is no government intervention, we call that decentralized economy. It means Companies can decide their own prices and production. How many quantities they need to produce at what price they can decide by themselves. We call that decentralized the scene or decentralized uh, markets. So household decide what to buy and who to work for. Example of decentralized decisions. Nobody is forcing you to work in agriculture sector or in banking sector, you decide. So farm decide who to hire and what to produce, right? This is decentralized decision making in market economy. So free market contain many buyers and sellers of numerous goods and services. So all of them are interested primarily in their own well-being. It's true or false. Right? You decide what is best for you. It means you exert some kind of selfish behavior, right? If you decide what is best for you, you want to work for the company who's gonna pay you the most. So look at the collective action. So the society will go down or will be uplifted. Anyone? If everybody start doing what suits them the best for their own well-being, so society comprised of a number of people, everybody in the society, 
thinking for their own well-being what will happen society will be uplifted is good or bad it is good mm-hmm. so collectively organized economy economic activity and promoting overall economic well-being right so we call this concept invisible hand it means something someone is pushing you right so we have a very nice video for it and we'll see in our next slide but let's understand this concept here so this phenomena is basically observed by adam smith and he made this observation that households and firms interacting in the market as if they are guided by an invisible hand and what that is price you look at the price and you become selfish whether it suits me or not it suits me you buy it it doesn't suit me you leave that one nobody is forcing you right what will happen it will create a two way impression you buy it for your own well being right at appropriate cost at appropriate price the firms they keep the price for example 10 dollar they do not increase the price from 10 to 15 dollar why because everybody wants to buy it at at 10 dollar so quantity going to be increased and firms profit going to be increased as well right so everybody is working for their own well being everybody is selfish in that case the whole society going to be lifted upward right so when you collect take the collective actions it means society is going towards from underdeveloped to developing to developed countries so it means price guide decision makers to reach cust- to 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 reach outcomes that tend to maximize the welfare of society as a whole so it means people or consumer just look at the price and that price gonna play a major role in welfare of the society so let's watch a small video here it will further clarify your concept invisible hand an economy is a tricky thing to control and governments are always trying to figure out how to do it back in 1776 economist adam smith shocked everyone by saying that what governments should actually do is just leave people alone to buy and sell freely among themselves he suggested that if they just leave self-interested traders to compete with one another markets are guided to positive outcomes as if by an invisible hand if someone charges less than you customers will buy from them instead you have to lower the price or offer something better whenever enough people demand something they will be supplied by the market like spoiled children only in this case everyone's happy later free marketeers like austrian economist friedrich hayek argued that this hands off approach actually works better than any kind of central plan but the problem is economists can take a long time to reach their equilibrium and may even stall along the way and in the meantime people can get a little frustrated which is why governments usually end up taking things into their own more visible hands instead invisible hand understand everyone please do participate okay everyone hear me yes 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 yes, 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 yes. yes. okay yes. and now the principle 7 yes which is a counter argument that governments can sometimes improve market outcomes the key point is sometimes so question is in our previous you know principle in which markets are a good way to organize the market outcomes or market activity and we talk about the invisible hand if that invisible hand is so great then why we need government help a short answer you know i just gave you 
uh, during presenting that video. So only works if government enforces rules and maintains the key institutions. So what happened? For example, you're hungry. You go to the. If you're, you're hungry, you go to a noodle shop. You eat the noodle. And the restaurant owner he came and asked then demand you know he should be paid for the noodles he supplied and you refuse that one. What will happen? If all the people, they just eat the noodles and refuse to pay the noodle supplier or the person who owned that restaurant, he will close the restaurant. That's it. It means in that case, governments are needed to ensure property rights. Right? And governments needed for efficiency and equity as well. For efficiency, it's very good. What does it mean by efficiency? I hope you studied in management. It means producing more from less. Less input, output is more, right? And what do we mean by equity? Let's talk about this. Here. So if the market is free, Government is no, you know, government is not playing any role in the market. Then what happened? There is a point that market fail, which means market fails to allocate resources efficiently. Like in our uh, video, if everyone is, you know, making bread and different flavors of bread, then there is like human tendency to eat that bread. You, you cannot eat 50 breads a day. 